Number 9. USS Kitty Wake Launched in 1945, the USS Kitty Wake was an American submarine rescue ship that served during World War II. The 251-foot-long vessel went on to enjoy a lengthy career participating in submarine maneuvers and sea trials in the Caribbean and Mediterranean seas, as well as the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. The Kitty Wake also served in rescue and salvage missions. In addition to saving stranded soldiers and vehicles, it picked up 12 Cuban refugees who were found in a boat off Key West in 1963, attempting to flee their home country. After the Challenger space shuttle disaster in 1986, the ship and its crew found the missing black box at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean during a massive search undertaken by the Department of Defense and the U.S. Coast Guard. The Kitty Wake was decommissioned in 1994 after 49 years of service. It languished in Norfolk, Virginia for several years during negotiations to relocate it to Grand Cayman as a natural reef and scuba diving site. In 2011, after several years of delays, the decaying ship was sunk in the shallow waters off Seven Mile Beach in the Cayman Islands. Today, the USS Kitty Wake is now one of the best-known diving wrecks in the Caribbean, if not the world. Number 8. Corsair Fighter Plane Two years after undergoing test flights in 1940, the American-made Vought F-4U Corsair fighter plane went on its first combat missions in Guadalcanal. It saw action during World War II and the Korean War as a carrier-based aircraft, meaning it operated mainly from naval aircraft carriers. Known for its effectiveness, the Corsair was soon in high demand. The French received the final delivery of the aircraft in 1953. It was also used by the British, New Zealand, Argentine, and Honduran militaries, just to name a few. Throughout its 11-year production run, nearly 12,600 of the aircraft were produced. Even some Japanese pilots admitted that they thought the Corsair was the most formidable American fighter plane involved in World War II. During a routine training mission in Hawaii in 1948, one of the planes began sputtering. Its engine failed. Thankfully, the quick-thinking pilot safely and smoothly landed the ailing Corsair in the waters off Honolulu. He maneuvered it so gracefully it wasn't even damaged from the impact. While the plane sank to the seabed, the pilot reportedly swam ashore in his life jacket. Today, the submerged skeletal remains of the Corsair sits roughly three miles off the Oahu coast. Decades of being immersed in seawater have taken a toll on the aircraft. At first glance, it looks like all that's left of it is the fuselage, but one of the wings also remains, buried in the sand. Despite its decaying condition, the Corsair is a popular site for divers and underwater photographers. It's home to thriving populations of garden eels, jacks, stingrays, and other marine creatures who have repurposed the plane as an artificial reef. Number 7. Train Graveyard While mapping the ocean floor in 1985, diver Paul Hepler discovered a sunken train graveyard in the Atlantic Ocean five miles off the Long Branch, New Jersey shore. He had no idea how the two submerged locomotives came to rest on the seafloor under 90 feet of water. The steam engines were identified as rare pre-Civil War Planet Class 222T models dating back to the 1850s. Planet Class 222T locomotives became obsolete shortly after they started being manufactured, so they were only made for a short while. Although they were powerful for their 15-ton size, they were no match for the 35-ton steam engines that were also being made at the time and which packed a much larger punch. Their 000 wheel layout was popular in Britain, but was a very rare design for an American train. Oddly, there are no records of the locomotives being built, lost, or dropped into the ocean. They may have fallen, or were perhaps deliberately pushed off a shipping barge to prevent the vessel from capsizing in a storm. The mysterious trains are reportedly in remarkably good condition after sitting at the bottom of the Atlantic for a century and a half, according to the Daily Mail. But the New Jersey scuba diving website tells a different story, stating that the engineers' cabins and other wooden parts rotted away long ago, leaving just the wheels and boiler barrel behind. In fact, the website describes the trains as not really that great of a dive. In 2013, a member of the Philadelphia chapter of the Explorers Club named Dan Lieb teamed up with the New Jersey Museum of Transportation to figure out what, if anything, to do with the locomotives. Nothing seems to have come of it, and they remain on the seafloor today. Do you think the trains should be removed from the ocean or left there? Let us know what you think in the comments down below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. Messerschmitt BF-109 during World War II, the German Luftwaffe relied mainly on two fighter aircraft. One of them was the Messerschmitt BF-109, which entered service in 1937 during the Spanish Civil War. It remained in use for the Luftwaffe until the end of World War II and served under the Spanish Air Force until 1965. It was also used by the Hungarian Air Force, the Royal Romanian Air Force, and several other militaries. During its early days, the Messerschmitt BF-109 was one of the most advanced fighter jets. It was extremely successful and remains the most produced fighter aircraft in history, with nearly 34,000 having been built in less than 10 years between Sadly, some of them were produced by slave laborers at Nazi concentration camps. In recent years, news headlines reported on the discovery of a wrecked BF-109 sitting upside down on the seafloor near Crete. 
Around 89 feet beneath the water's surface, it sits frozen in time, serving as a sobering reminder of one of the darkest chapters in world history. Researchers initially thought the downed plane may have crashed during the Battle of Crete in 1941 when the Nazis invaded the island, but a closer look at the wreck revealed that the plane may be a variant that was produced after the battle in 1942 or 1943. The Germans kept thorough records of their aircraft losses throughout the war, but the submerged BF-109 off Crete continued to evade identification for quite some time. Finally, it was determined that the plane did in fact fly in the Battle of Crete after all. It was shot down while attacking Allied forces in the region. The pilot, Oberlieutenant Berthold Jung, survived the crash and was taken as a prisoner of war by the Allies. He was relocated to a POW camp in Australia where he remained until 1947. Jung returned to Germany after the war, where he worked as an interpreter and joined the post-war Navy. After retiring in 1973, he became the president of a local Red Cross. He lived until 1992. Number 5. Canadian Pacific Railroad Cargo Train While traveling along a steep cliff next to Lake Superior in 1910, a Canadian Pacific Railroad cargo train struck a boulder and derailed. The locomotive and several boxcars plunged into the water and sank 235 feet to the lake bed. Three men died in the tragedy, which remains the only known train wreck in the Great Lakes to this day. In 2014, over a century later, diver Terry Irvine discovered some of the submerged boxcars near the town of Marathon in Ontario. A group of shipwreck hunters found the locomotive two years later with Irvine's help. After failing to locate it with sonar, they used a remotely operated vehicle to capture eerie footage of the train in its final resting place. The team had hoped to salvage the locomotive, but like many sunken vehicles, it's too damaged to raise. Number 4. Brand New Pickup Trucks in 2018, the YM Efficiency cargo ship hit a storm off Newcastle, Australia while traveling from the U.S. to New South Wales, sending more than 80 shipping containers overboard into the Pacific Ocean. During a major salvage operation to retrieve the containers nearly two years later, divers recovered a pair of Chevrolet Silverado pickup trucks. There were plans to switch the driver's seat to the right side of the heavy-duty pickup trucks once they arrived down under, where trucks like these sell for around $95,000 U.S. dollars each. But photos of the vehicles after their recovery show that they they were heavily damaged in the disaster. Australian Maritime Safety Authority project manager told the Newcastle Herald that the Silverados had become waterlogged after descending nearly 400 feet and crash landing on the sea floor. After sitting there for 22 months, they'd begun rotting past any hope of repair. In fact, the trucks had spent so long underwater, Chevy introduced an entirely new model before they were brought to the surface. Instead of selling for a pretty penny, they were instead destined for a scrapyard. Another container retrieved during the $9.5 million salvage operation was filled with tires. Number 3. Dozens of Luxury Cars Trucks aren't the only vehicles that have been found underwater. In 2002, the Norwegian car carrier MB Tricolor collided with the Bahamian cargo ship Kariba while traveling from Belgium to Southampton, England. It took just a half hour for the vessel to sink beneath the frigid waters of the North Sea, where it came to a rest 20 miles off the French coast. Thankfully, all 24 crew members survived. The tricolor took 2,871 luxury cars down with it to the sea floor, including BMWs, Volvos, and Saabs. Altogether, the vehicles were worth around $100 million. The shipment includes a batch of highly coveted Volvo XC90 SUVs. Dutch salvage company Smit International was contracted to recover the sunken vessel the year after it wrecked. Using high-tension wires, workers cut the ship into nine segments instead of refloating it in one piece. They were unable to save any of the submerged cars. Another cargo ship, the Ho Osaka, had a similar close call in 2015 when it began listing heavily shortly after departing from Norway for Germany. Crew members per purposely beached the vessel in hopes of saving the 1,200 cars and SUVs aboard, including Jaguars and Land Rovers. The vehicles were worth an estimated $45 million. Salvage teams immediately went to work in hopes of refloating the Osaka. It remained stranded for 19 days and 27% of the vehicles aboard were damaged. Luckily, the losses were far less severe than in the case of the Tricolor. As it turned out, several of the SUVs were heavier than what their weight was listed as, destabilizing the ship before it ever left port. Number 2. Mars. Built during the 1560s, the Swedish warship Mars was the leading ship of King Eric XIV's fleet. Named after the Roman god of war, it had a reputation for being the world's fiercest warship. Measuring 230 feet long, it was also one of the largest warships of its time. In 1564, shortly after it was built, Mars caught fire, exploded, and sank during a battle in the Baltic Sea. 
Between 800 and 900 Swedish and German sailors died and descended to a watery grave, along with a treasure trove of gold and silver coins. A team of divers discovered the wreck in 2011 after spending years researching its possible location. It sits 246 feet beneath the waves. Researchers confirmed the ship's identity after noticing its unique cannons and several other features. A collection of silver coins minted by Eric XIV of Sweden further verified that the wreck is the Mars. National Geographic reported in 2014 that experts had identified it as the best preserved vessel of its kind, representing the first generation of Europe's big three-masted warships. Maritime archaeologist Johan Rundby described Mars as a missing link that is helping to fill the gap of knowledge among experts when it comes to 16th century warships. Raising the wreck would be expensive and risky. To avoid damaging the fragile artifacts, researchers have agreed to leave it on the sea floor and to instead study it by scanning it and creating 3D reconstructions. In doing so, they hope to gain some insight into the final moments before the ship sank, which can help them understand better how warriors of the time period behaved in battle. Number 1. RMS Republic Built in 1903, the RMS Republic was a Royal Mail ship that was authorized to carry both British and American mail. It was originally built for service on the Dominion Line, but became property of the White Star Line shortly after its maiden voyage. The 570-foot-long, 16,000-ton ship was one of the most cosmopolitan passenger ships of its time. It was nicknamed the Millionaire Ship because it often carried wealthy passengers. In the early morning hours of January 23, 1909, the Republic encountered thick fog off the coast of Nantucket Island. It collided with the steamship SS Florida despite taking several safety measures, including reducing its speed and sounding whistles continuously. Between both ships, seven people died as a result of the collision. The surviving passengers were transferred to the less damaged SS Florida. Historians partially credit the efficient evacuation process for the small number of lives lost. The Republic sank beneath the waves at 8.40 p.m. the next day. Since then, rumors have circulated among treasure hunters and shipwreck enthusiasts alike about vast treasure being aboard the sunken ship. The hoard was thought to be worth somewhere between $250,000 and $3 million at the time of the sinking. Today, the goods could be worth up to $1 billion. A team located the wreck in 1981, and in 1987, the team's leader, Martin Bayerl, raised $2.5 million from investors to further explore the vessel in hopes of finding the treasure. Thanks for watching. Which one of these incredible vehicles is the coolest to you? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like these. We'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.